The brain is not glass, but it can shatter. Not like a window pane breaking into sharp fragments. More like a galaxy of tiny lights, blinking, flickering, sometimes going dark forever. When a brain is injured, it isn't always obvious. There are levels. So what are these levels? What separates a mild injury from a devastating one? And what happens to a human being at each stage? That's what we're explaining today, step by step. From the lightest shakes to the darkest silences, level zero. Before we talk about damage, we need to understand the baseline, the brain, unbroken, untouched. Picture 86 billion neurons packed into folds and valleys, each firing signals down threads thinner than a hair. Together, they create an orchestra of thought, emotion, and action. The brain doesn't just think, it regulates breathing, coordinates heartbeat, manages hormones, stores memories, and predicts the world before it happens. Every blink, every laugh, every choice is born here. It's protected, but only barely. The skull is strong, yes, but it's brittle against high force. Cerebrospinal fluid acts as a cushion, but even that can slosh and shift under sudden movement. The brain isn't fixed in place. It floats, delicate, like a jelly suspended in water. And that fragility matters, because when impact comes, whether from a fall, a blow, or a violent jolt, this galaxy of neurons can twist, tear, or go dark. Level zero is the baseline. It is health. It is what we want to protect. But it is also a reminder. All it takes is one hit, one fall, one wrong angle for everything we take for granted to change. Level one, the lightest touch of injury. A bell struck softly, ringing, but not broken. This is what doctors call a mild concussion or mild traumatic brain injury, MTBI. It often happens in sports, minor car accidents, or simple slips and falls. And though the word mild sounds harmless, the effects can be anything but. A person might feel dazed for a moment. They might not even lose consciousness. Symptoms creep in, dizziness, nausea, confusion, trouble concentrating, sensitivity to light. Some call it seeing stars. Others describe it as a fog settling over the mind. Inside the skull, neurons have stretched. Chemical balances are disrupted. It's not like cutting a wire. It's more like a temporary power surge that throws the system off. The brain usually recovers in days to weeks. But here's the danger. One concussion increases vulnerability to another. Repeated concussions, especially close together, can cause cumulative damage. Athletes know this too well. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE, has been linked to repeated mild TBIS. That means even level one, if repeated, can leave scars that echo for a lifetime. Think of it this way. If the brain were a glass, level one is a crack. You can still drink from it. You might not notice right away, but the structure has weakened and stress in the same place risks a shatter. Level one shows us something crucial. No brain injury is truly mild. Level 2. Now, the ringing grows louder. The flicker of lights becomes a blackout in certain neighborhoods of the brain. This is where injury crosses from mild into moderate. Doctors may classify it as a moderate concussion or mild traumatic brain injury, depending on the criteria. The difference from level 1 is time and severity. Here, unconsciousness may last up to 30 minutes. Memory loss stretches beyond the moment of impact sometimes for hours or even a full day. The fog doesn't lift in days. It can linger for weeks or months. Cognitive symptoms grow sharper. Difficulty focusing, speech problems, mood swings, slower processing speed. Physical effects may include persistent headaches, balance problems, even seizures in some cases. On a biological level, neurons are not just stretched, they're bruised. Axons, the long threads that connect neurons, may suffer damage in a process called diffuse axonal injury. It's microscopic, invisible on most scans, but it scrambles communication networks. Imagine highways twisted out of shape, cars rerouting endlessly, traffic slowed everywhere. Many professional boxers live here, not in theory, but in reality. After years of blows, their brains sit in the zone between level 1 and level 2, never fully healing before the next impact comes. And while recovery is possible, it isn't always complete. Memory gaps, fatigue, and subtle cognitive decline may remain. Level 3. 
Now the city goes dark in whole districts. Entire neighborhoods of the mind switch off. At this level, unconsciousness can last for hours, sometimes stretching to a full day. Memory loss extends before and after the injury. Someone might wake up not knowing how they got there, not even remembering the day before. Symptoms are profound. Difficulty speaking, problems with coordination, mood instability, sensory sensitivity. Recovery is not just a matter of rest. It can take months, and often rehabilitation is required. Physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy, tools to help the brain rewire itself. Moderate TB is at this level often leave permanent marks. Survivors may find themselves slower to learn, struggling with short-term memory, or facing chronic headaches. Personality shifts are common. Families often say the person just isn't the same anymore. That's because damage here isn't only to circuits, it's to identity. The prefrontal cortex, the hippocampus, and other regions linked to decision-making and memory can all be affected. Think about this. A person at level 3 may physically heal, but mentally, they might feel like a stranger in their own life. Imagine remembering your childhood vividly, but forgetting what you had for lunch. Imagine laughing uncontrollably one moment, then breaking into tears the next. That's the landscape of a level 3 injury. Level 4. Now the windows are shattered, the walls are cracked, the structure still stands, but it will never be the same. Severe traumatic brain injury is life-altering. Here, unconsciousness lasts longer than 24 hours. In some cases, it stretches into days or weeks. When survivors awaken, they may be disoriented, unable to recognize loved ones, or incapable of forming new memories. Physically, severe TB is can impair movement, speech, vision, and coordination. Cognitively, they can strip away reasoning, planning, and awareness. Some patients recover partial function, many do not. Rehabilitation is long, uncertain, and often incomplete. Biologically, the brain has suffered widespread damage. Neurons are not just bruised, but destroyed. Swelling, bleeding, and oxygen deprivation often compound the trauma. In scans, doctors may see dark lesions scattered across brain tissue, silent evidence of a storm that tore through once living circuits. And the cost isn't only medical. Severe TBIS ripple through families. Loved ones may feel grief for a person who is still alive but profoundly changed. The survivors themselves may feel trapped between fragments of their old self and the reality of permanent limitations. Think of your brain as a library. Level 4 is not knocking over a few shelves, it's a flood that soaks entire wings. Some books are gone forever, others are smudged, pages torn. You can still walk inside, still read, but the collection will never be whole again. Level 4 is the turning point. Beyond here, recovery becomes less about returning to who you were and more about adapting to who you've become. Level 5. Severe. That's the word. A patient collapses, the world spins, responses fade, consciousness drifts. Clinically, severe brain injury is marked by a Glasgow Coma Scale GCS, of 3 to 8. This isn't just a number, it's the line between awareness and being trapped inside your own body, unable to respond. The causes are countless. A high-speed car crash, a brutal fall, an assault. Every twist of fate that smashes the skull jars the brain, ruptures blood vessels, and throws neurons into chaos. Imagine your brain as a city. Traffic lights fail, roads crumble, communication lines snap, power disappears. That's a severe TBI. Neurons die, circuits break, functions vanish. Recovery is slow. Rehabilitation can take months, sometimes years. Physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy. Every day is a small battle. Every day is a small triumph. Some patients survive. Around 74% show some functional improvement after two years. But improvement is relative. Memory gaps, emotional fragility, fatigue that never fully lifts. Only a fraction regain full pre-injury ability. Even in the bleakest cases, life adapts, families adjust, new routines emerge. And the brain? It is remarkable, plastic, flexible, always seeking new paths to work around the damage. Level 6. Coma. It's a word you whisper carefully. The patient lies unresponsive, eyes closed, no reaction to voice, touch, or pain. Time stretches, 
Days, weeks, sometimes months. The world moves on outside, but inside, the brain is suspended in a silent storm. Here, the GCS is typically three to five, the lowest end of human responsiveness. The brain is alive, but trapped. Signals that once danced freely across neural networks are scrambled, halted, interrupted. Thoughts, memories, awareness, all frozen in a limbo. Causes intensify, diffuse axonal injury, large hematomas, oxygen deprivation, each insult stacks, each second without oxygen bleeds neurons dry, each blow narrows the margin between survival and tragedy. Yet, coma is not always permanent. Some patients awaken after days, weeks, rarely, months. Every stir, every blink is a small victory. Even a fleeting movement can ripple hope through a room, a signal that the mind beneath the stillness is not completely gone. Outcomes are grim. Half of very severe patients never regain independence. Others recover partially, reliant on caregivers. But in these fragile moments, hope still flickers. Fragile, uncertain, yet undeniable. Level 7. Not fully gone, not fully present, suspended somewhere in between. A patient may open their eyes, move a finger, sometimes just a flicker, a squeeze of a hand, a twitch, a tiny nod. This is the world of a persistent vegetative state, PVS, or a minimally conscious state, MCS. Life persists, but the awareness that shapes experience is fractured. A spark remains, but the mind's full light struggles to shine. The brain is damaged, yet not obliterated. Some networks survive. Reflexes endure. Breathing, circulation, heartbeat, they continue, mechanical and steady. Yet the higher order circuits, the ones that allow thought, memory, recognition and self-awareness, are broken, scrambled or dormant. The symphony of consciousness plays in fragments. Recovery is rare, but it is not impossible. After one year, most patients remain in PVS or MCS, trapped in a limbo of partial awareness. Yet isolated cases prove the brain can reroute signals, reclaim lost connections, and ignite tiny bursts of cognition. Rehabilitation is delicate, painstaking, and slow. Sensory stimulation, therapy, repetition, patience, hope. Every blink, every movement, Every subtle response is a sign that some spark of consciousness refuses to vanish entirely. Here, life is not binary. Consciousness is not on or off. It exists as a spectrum, fragile, flickering, and often hidden. Level 8. And then comes the silence. Not a coma. Not a vegetative state. Brain death. Absolute. Irreversible. Medically and legally, it is death. Every electrical signal, every spark of neuron activity has ceased. The brainstem, the command center controlling heartbeat, breathing reflexes, is gone. All cortical activity, the seat of thought, sensation, awareness, is permanently absent. The body may breathe with a ventilator. The heart may continue its rhythm for a time, but it is only machinery mimicking life. The mind, the consciousness, the essence of the person, is gone forever. Guidelines are strict. Adults, children, pupils fixed, reflexes gone, no response to pain, no spontaneous breathing, tests repeated and confirmed. Recovery is impossible once brain circuits fall silent. Here, hope ends. And yet, in that finality, there is clarity. So, what happens to a human being? A person cannot live without their brain. It is the body's control center, the base of life, governing every breath, every heartbeat, every thought, and every memory. Each level of injury is a reminder of both the brain's fragility and its extraordinary role in defining who we are. To lose its function is not simply to lose ability, it is to lose identity, connection, awareness, purpose, memory, love, and the very essence of self. Protecting the brain means protecting life in its purest, most fragile, precious, and irreplaceable form.